Every newborn baby is very precious, but they also can be extremely vulnerable, especially those babies born prematurely. In New Zealand, 5,000 babies are born before 37 weeks every year, and most of them will end up in a neonatal intensive care unit. Here in the NICU, we look after preterm babies who are born as much as 17 weeks early, and they may only weigh four or 500 grams. One of the most important concerns about preterm babies is how their brain is going to grow and develop outside the womb at a time when they should be inside the womb. And one of the key factors that may help support brain growth is optimal nutrition. My research group's undertaking a couple of large randomised controlled trials into how we can best provide nutrition for preterm babies to support optimal growth of their brain. Both of your babies are in the DIAMOND trial. What's it been like taking part in a research trial? It's been awesome because they learn how to taste and smell the food before they can even have it. Now they're a little bit older, are they starting to learn to suckle at the breast now? Especially the boy, he's full on to the breast. Really? The boys yes. are usually slower. Jane Harding's work with glucose gel in newborn babies has been life-changing for premature babies and their families. It now is being trialled as a preventative measure for all babies at risk of low blood sugar after birth. We've studied over 2,000 babies across 16 hospitals in Australia and New Zealand, looking at whether these babies this large number of babies who are born at risk, where they're giving them a single dose of this very simple effective gel just rubbed into the cheek, could actually prevent the low sugar levels. We don't know the answer yet, but if it could, then that would make a huge difference around the world and potentially a difference to those children's brains for the rest of their lives. Another researcher at the university also is investigating this amazing organ. The human brain is the most complex and the least well understood organ of the human body. But in the Auckland Bioengineering Institute, they are building a virtual brain to provide further insights into how the brain develops and works. How do you develop a model of blood vessel growth and how that makes the brain fold? How do you actually tackle a problem like that? So we have, for example, the major vessels that's going through the brain that we can extract the data from the images. But then when it gets to the capillaries, it becomes very, very complicated. But if you look into here, then we have the major vessels and we have the capillaries that we grew using this computer algorithm to go to the tissue and to the cell level. And when it gets to the cell level, we use um, computer programs to couple these ones mathematically and uh, physiologically to, to simulate what's happening in real life. As you've been doing that, has it made you think that the brain actually is not such a magical box after all? Well, the, the more and more we're doing work, we realise how um, naive we are. But um, that happens all the time when I go and talk to clinicians and physiologists and neuroscientists. It's like, it's very complex. It's not as simple as you think. And uh, we're, we're getting there eventually. The Centre for Brain Research has been looking into human brain disease for a long time. So Richard Fall has been at the helm since the centre was established in 2009. Ten years ago, it was generally accepted that about one in five people are touched by a brain disease during their lifetime. Now with the ageing population, it's one in three. So the impact is now for the future is going to be even, even more than what it was in the past. Funding a research enterprise like this, yeah, because yeah. it is a big yeah, enterprise, yeah. isn't it, must must be very difficult in terms of securing the well, amount yeah. of funding that's necessary yeah. to take out the world leading research. Yeah. That well, with this engagement with the community, with the wider community, going out and talking to groups of the different associations, the, the different neurological associations then, and then linking up with family who have connection with philanthropists, you have philanthropic people coming on board and saying, we, want, we would like to help you. That's what I call doing research the Kiwi way. I'll just give you one example. We started off our brain bank with families who had Huntington's disease caused by a single gene. Right now we're involved in a partnership way of trialling the first ever treatment which is going to be a genetic treatment for Huntington's disease attempting to turn that gene down. It's taken all those, the whole 40 years I've been involved with research, it's taken this amount of time to come up with a possible Treatment may be a cure, which is a dream come true. It's a dream which I never thought we'd have. There we That's are. Wonderful. 
This has been an incredible journey for me, learning about some of the amazing brain research being undertaken at the University of Auckland. Research that will have a huge impact for all our futures. So much of this is only possible through the generous support of donors like you. Thank you.